Q&A section, uh, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll go ahead and call on you. If you have trouble asking a question and there's something wrong with your sound, you can drop it into the chat or you can text me at 408-712-9149 and I'll ask the question for you and feel free to direct it to any mayor. Identify yourself by your name and your outlet and then who you want to direct your question to. And with that, I'm really happy to introduce San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sam Licardo. I'm the mayor of the city of San Jose, and I'm honored to be joined uh, by friends and colleagues as part of the California Big City Mayors Coalition, united for a common and urgent cause. That is well after this pandemic has passed, an even more unyielding and intractable epidemic will persist in too many of our communities, and that is homelessness. Our large city mayors know too well the urgency of addressing homelessness that afflicts 161,000 of our fellow Californians. We have convened today as a bipartisan coalition to urge collective action as California has never taken before. This year's budget presents California with a once in a generation opportunity to dramatically reduce homelessness. If we can muster the collective courage and will to stand up for our most vulnerable neighbors. Today, we stand together to issue a clarion call for historic investment against California's shameful scourge of homelessness. On April 8th of this year, we sent a letter to our governor and to legislative leadership urging that they commit a substantial share of this year's more than $40 billion budgetary surplus toward a multi-year funding strategy to address this crisis, a commitment of $4 billion per year. We call for flexibility of dollars uh, to prevent homelessness, to triple down on successful initiatives, such as Governor Newsom's Project Home Key, get more of our unhoused neighbors off the streets to provide operating dollars necessary to sustain successful models of emergency, transitional and permanent housing, tiny homes, and the many other innovations that have emerged in each of our cities. Today, we stand united in urging a $20 billion commitment $4 billion per year over the next half decade. This commitment would be bold. Prior to this pandemic, the state of California had never spent more than a billion dollars to address homelessness. In, in fact, never even close to that. But we stand together to say that we need to treat homelessness like the crisis that it is. In recent weeks, we have met with the governor and legislative leadership. To discuss our options and opportunities, we've pressed our case, and they have responded. In mid-April, our Senate leadership rose to the challenge under Budget Chair Nancy Skinner and Senate Pro Temp Tony Atkins. And the California Senate issued its budget plan called Build Back Boldly. They called for precisely $4 billion in investment in homelessness solutions in each of the next five years for a total of $20 billion. And just yesterday, the assembly released its budget blueprint and chairperson Phil Ting and speaker Anthony Rendon and their colleagues similarly called for a $20 billion investment spread over the next half decade. We express our immense gratitude to our legislative leadership and their staff for recognizing this unique moment and for their continued partnership in this fight. Unfortunately, we have a governor who gets it about the daunting challenge of homelessness in our cities. He has already made historic commitments toward the housing solutions. And his team, led by Jason Elliott, and many others have forged a set of initiatives that have housed more homeless Californians than at any other time in California history. Project Room Key serving more than 35,000 unhoused residents, Home Key offering more than 6,000 permanent homes. And certainly this is greater progress than we've ever seen, but we have much, much more work to do. I want to thank the amazing leaders who are about to speak after me and whom I'm honored to call my colleagues and my friends. Each of them has led innovative solutions in their own cities to homelessness, enabled by flexible, timely dollars that they've used to address the unique needs of their cities and to do so quickly. We'll each be displaying some of these solutions in the backgrounds behind us. So in my case, you see behind me next to this freeway, uh, that is the 101, the emergency housing community that we've built here and just opened in recent weeks. 
Although building apartments in the Bay Area typically costs about $700,000 per apartment unit and requires four or five years to build in a development cycle, we've shown how we can reutilize neglected public land and innovative prefabricated modular construction methods to build communities like this one in less than six months at a fifth of the cost of a typical apartment. We've built three of these already in the last year and a fourth one will be underway shortly. It's my great honor to introduce my friend and colleague from the great city of Los Angeles, who has been a leading light nationally in this battle against homelessness. He has just announced an epic commitment in his own city with his own city's funds uh, for affordable housing and to address homelessness. Uh, welcome, Eric Garcetti. So much, uh, Sam Licardo, our fearless leader who has been the glue holding together uh, so much in this past year for us. And to this incredible august group of brother and sister mayors across the state, it really is one of the happiest uh, parts of my service as a public servant to come across, you know, bipartisan, nonpartisan geography of this great state together. And it was in 2017, I believe, maybe 2016, when I was chairing this group and we were the Big 11 before we became the Big 13. And so glad to have both Stockton and Riverside uh, as part of this organization now, where we were with the last governor saying, hey, this homelessness thing is pretty big. We'd love to see the state get involved. And uh, we all love Jerry Brown and Jerry kind of said, well, that's a local issue, but we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't quit. And we convinced him grudgingly because he only spent money grudgingly, but happily uh, in the end to start <laughs> heap dollars, which was the first direct allocation to cities, knowing cities could turn around solutions to homelessness immediately. Uh, with a governor who had, as a mayor, tackled homelessness, Governor Newsom saw that and ran with it, uh, not only taking and building on heap, but creating HAP and expanding those dollars. And then doing cutting edge work, which is now making a national splash with programs like Operation Home Key, um, which in Los Angeles resulted in us with the state by build, uh, buying 15 buildings and on our own another five, inspiring us to get to 20 buildings that we were able to purchase in just three months. This is the biggest crisis in California. We see it on our underpasses and overpasses. We see it under our bridges. And unfortunately, it's not just there anymore in the shadows. It's in front of businesses and homes. It is everywhere. It is the first thing people talk about, the second thing they talk about, and the third thing they talk about. And long after this pandemic is done, the pandemic of homelessness, which kills people disproportionately, and let's be clear what the consequences are in the worst cases, people die from homelessness. It is time for California, at a moment of a historic surplus, to speak to our values and to step up. And I know that we have the dream team with this governor and these two legislative leaders and their fellow colleagues. So that's why we were overjoyed to see both the President Pro Tem Atkins and Speaker Rendon put forward um, the support of $4 billion a year um, to have a five-year commitment, $20 billion, to go straight into California's communities and in those concentrated areas of California's biggest cities to make sure we continue that momentum. Behind each one of us, you see how we spend it. It's for shelter, it's for permanent housing, it's for cleanups, it's for services, it's for everything that we need to address the complexity of homelessness. And typically, those who are listening from the media or from the advocacy community are used to folks from uh, cities or folks from an issue area coming to Sacramento and saying, solve this problem for us. Here's our empty hat in hand, fill it. We're not coming with empty hats in hand. We're coming with hard hats on and pockets already uh, full of investments. In Los Angeles, what that meant, and when I became mayor just eight years ago, our homelessness budget from the city of Los Angeles, because we're not lucky like London to have a county city together, uh, was just $10 million. In the budget I released last week, it's $955 million. Part of that is state money. Part of that is local measure that we passed. And part of that is every extra ounce that we could find in this budget because this is our top priority. Add that up between 13 cities, we are putting billions of dollars of our own money on the line and saying, match us, meet this moment, get it right. It's not an either or, it is housing, yes. It is shelter, yes. It is services, yes. It is also trusting that cutting through red tape works when you empower local communities to make the decisions and spend quickly the money and we have a record and the data to show of the HAP and HEAP dollars effectively, quickly, and impactfully being spent in our communities. So with that, I wanna hand it over to my brother mayor in San Diego, um, who is one of our newest mayors, uh, but also one of our boldest leaders 
You know him from his state legislative work and also before that on the city council. Uh, but Todd Gloria, the floor is yours. Let's get this done. Amen. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti. Uh, thank you, Sam Licardo. Thank you to my fellow mayors who are here today to lift up and to elevate this issue of housing and homelessness. Uh, Mayor Garcetti, you were saying something a moment ago that really resonated for me. In the middle of our respective 10 years in office where we are leading during a pandemic and an economic slowdown, it is striking to me that the thing I'm asked about the most by San Diegans is what are you doing about homelessness? They ask everyone to consider that, right? In a moment when people are fearful for their health and the health of their loved ones, are fearful about their finances and the finances of their families, that this is the issue that they talk to us the most about. And that's, I think, precisely why this group of leaders of cities across the state, bipartisan leaders say with one voice that we need continued state assistance in order to be able to respond to that question of what are you doing about homelessness? Now, I want to acknowledge the leadership of our governor and of my former colleagues, my senator, Senate Pro, Pro Tem, Tony Atkins, uh, and my former speaker, or the current speaker, my uh, former legislative leader, uh, Anthony Rendon, who has stepped up, as my colleagues have mentioned, in mirroring our request for $20 billion over multiple years, understanding that we can't solve this problem in one fiscal year. But it's gonna take the repeated commitment of state, federal, and local leadership to get the job done. Now, Eric was talking about bringing some hard hats to the table. I'm bringing some data to the table because I recognize that for my colleagues in the legislature, my former colleagues in the legislature, you really wanna see how are we putting these dollars to work? when they fight through the budget process to make sure that the dollars that uh, Californians entrust their state government with, that those dollars will flow to things that are actually getting the job done. And I'll tell you down here in San Diego, we've been working extremely hard to change the status quo on homelessness, to move away from shiny objects of the previous administrations, instead invest in proven strategies that are housing first focused, human centered and uh, compassionate in their approach. I wanna tell you about a couple key stories. Number one is we converted our San Diego Convention Center into a temporary homeless shelter during the pandemic. What that allowed us to do through an unprecedented collaboration between the city, the county and nonprofit partners, we were able to house over 4,000 San Diegans, transitioning over 1,300 of them into permanent supportive housing over less than a year's time. 43 families housed through that process. It really shows what happens when we choose to make this a priority and act with the urgency that Californians are asking us to get done. Through that process, we were able to vaccinate many of our homeless in our San Diego community, making sure that our worst fears of an outbreak in our unsheltered population did not come to pass. Probably more importantly for all my state friends is the fact that uh, we used a significant amount of home key dollars from our state partners to purchase two extended stay hotels and convert them into new permanent supportive homes for 400 high need clients. You can see one of those hotels behind me uh, in the image behind me. The 332 homes that we were able to build uh, require $2.4 million in annual funds to provide the supportive services that keep people housed. The housing unit is helpful, but as my fellow mayors know, it's the services that keep people housed for the long term. The city of San Diego is prepared, we're ready, we're anxious to be able to acquire more of these hotel projects to convert them into the permanent supportive housing that we need to get people off the streets for good. But we need flexible funding as well to provide those services to say with a straight face to our residents and to our bosses that we will keep people housed and get them off the streets permanently. I have a whole lot more data and I don't wanna to take too much time, but I will just tell you that when we follow the housing first strategies, when we invest in more housing, permanent housing with the wraparound services, we know that we can get people off the streets and we can use some of the innovative concepts that are seen behind so many of my colleagues here to do even more. The city is doing its part through emergency beds, safe parking programs, safe storage programs. Again, dollars entrusted to us by the state that are getting results. And so to my colleagues in, in Sacramento who are divvying up the budget as we speak, we ask you to listen to the calls of Californians that are saying this is an urgent concern. Listen to the mayors who are willing to take on the responsibility of engaging in these matters and doing the difficult things like citing these housing projects, like acquiring these properties, like executing the contracts to actually get the housing done. In my budget, proposed budget, like Mayor Garcetti, we are making an unprecedented commitment to this particular problem with additional state support, we can do even more. So as big city mayors, we are calling upon our state leaders for their continued partnership. 
uh, to take advantage of this once in a generation opportunity to fund the housing and the services that we know work for people who are experiencing homelessness and to make a lasting impact on this crisis that I believe all of us were elected to solve. So with those comments, it gives me great pleasure to turn the mic over to my friend up in San Francisco. Uh, some people think that's the second largest city in the state. I want to remind everyone in San Diego, uh, but I'll forgive them if they if they confuse the matter. My friend, Mayor London Breed. Mayor Breed? Thank you, Mayor Gloria. And thank you so much, um, everyone, for joining us here today and for coming together on these very important issues that impact our cities. Here in San Francisco, we've been working really hard to build housing. Uh, more shelters and to connect people with the services they need. We've developed over 9,000 permanent housing placements and we created thousands more. But in our last point in time count, we still have over 5,000 people who are facing unsheltered homelessness. The reality is that not one city can do this alone. Not one city can fully address this problem because it's clearly a statewide crisis. We all need more resources to truly face this challenge at the scale that's needed to make a real difference. And we need to acknowledge that this problem won't be fixed overnight. It will require a sustained commitment over multiple years. This is a challenge that has developed over decades and our response will take multiple years to really solve what is truly an embedded problem. We need to build more housing, of course, provide rental assistance for people in need and create connections to employment, education, healthcare, and behavioral health resources. There's no one solution to homelessness. It requires a number of different approaches and many of them take time. That's why we're all here today. We're calling for a commitment from the state to provide the resources we need to make a difference over multiple years. There's so much to do. We have to reactivate our shelter systems after COVID. We have to house people from shelter in place hotels and continue to move people off the streets. Some of us have been able to purchase hotels and make them permanent housing options for formerly homeless people. That has been incredible, has a lot to do with Project Room Key. But just imagine in our reaction to this pandemic and what we've been able to do within this past year, if we were provided the resources to continue this work, it can be done. Uh, and I'm committed to working with my fellow mayors to do it. I look forward to uh, making sure that we have partners and resources and support in the state. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce Mayor Jerry Dreyer from uh, Fresno. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Breed. I appreciate it. Uh, again, Jerry Dyer, Mayor of City of Fresno. Uh, first off, I uh, can't say enough about the unprecedented partnership that exists between California's largest cities, uh, Governor Newsom, and our state legislative leaders as we address uh, the homeless crisis in our cities. And it is a crisis. Uh, this partnership uh, is allowing us to rescue our most vulnerable population uh, providing them with a safe environment to live, uh, much needed services, and ultimately uh, hope for a future, a better future. Uh, in, in Fresno, uh, we've used Project Home Key dollars, uh, general fund dollars, CARES Act funds, uh, collectively to purchase and operate five motels uh, to house and provide services uh, to our homeless population here. Uh, these motels have allowed us to initiate uh, what we refer to as Project Off-Ramp in our city. Uh, it is an off-ramp from our freeways and a life of homelessness and an on-ramp to housing services and a productive life for our homeless population. Uh, our freeways, which uh, quite frankly once resembled urban campgrounds, uh, are very close to becoming homeless free in Fresno uh, thanks to Project Home Key and our state legislative leaders and Governor Newsom. Uh, however, this success story is only the beginning. Uh, it is our plan uh, to take Project Off-Ramp and replicate it citywide and neighborhood by neighborhood. In order to do so, we need long-term flexible funding to provide services um, and alternative housing models uh, for our homeless population. Absent that, we ultimately end up displacing homeless from one neighborhood to the next neighborhood without real solutions. 
with the state's budget surplus and one-time federal stimulus dollars, uh, I believe we have a unique opportunity uh, to make transformative investments in our communities, putting an end to homelessness once and for all. I urge our uh, state legislative leaders and Governor Newsom uh, to continue with what I believe the most meaningful partnership in our state's history and to be able to allocate the $20 billion uh, in order for us to address homelessness over the next five years. And so it's uh, my honor at this time to be able to introduce a, a longtime state leader, uh, former Senate President Pro Tem for seven years, and that is uh, Mayor Daryl Steinberg from the city of Sacramento. Daryl. Have to unmute. Um, thank, th thank you very much, Mayor Dyer. I really appreciate that. I am sitting virtually, and it is virtual, uh, in one of Sacramento's sprung shelters, um, a quality facility, where we have the capacity to house up to 100 women um, suffering from homelessness. And as my colleagues have said, it's one of the many strategies that we as big city mayors are employing to combat this seemingly intractable issue of homelessness. And of course, it's not intractable. It just requires will and resources. A word about the big city mayors, because I want to make sure those listening understand how impactful this group of mayors has been and continues to be. And Eric Garcetti told a little bit of the history to continue that history, it was this organization that for the first time convinced successive governors and the legislature to direct state resources directly to cities to combat homelessness. Because we are not health and human services agencies, and yet homelessness, as is evident, is our most significant urban problem. I was thinking about last night um, and President Biden and how he talked about seizing the moment and about the rare opportunity to take a moonshot, to make a fundamental change that changes the course of history, to make a change that affects in a positive way the lives of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. An opportunity to prove that the impossible is in fact possible. This is the moment in California to take that moonshot and make homelessness dramatically different, dramatically invisibly better in all of our cities. Homelessness must not be hopelessness and it need not be hopelessness for we know what works. We are doing it. We are getting thousands of people off the streets and now with the additional resources to be able to help those uh, dealing with uh, rent struggles and to be able to prevent evictions and to be able to prevent people from losing their homes. With $20 billion of state resources, which is about 10 times more than we, or more than we have ever gotten, even with, with Heap and Hap and Project Moon Key and Home Key, we can take to scale what we are demonstrating in real time works. And imagine a California with this kind of investment, people breathing a sigh of relief because we've done the humane thing. We've done the right thing on behalf of suffering people and on behalf of our business communities and our, and our neighborhoods. Not that we cure it, but that we make it dramatically and visibly better. That's the moonshot opportunity we have here in California over these next couple of weeks. I agree with Mayor Licardo and the other mayors. So grateful to the legislative leadership for putting forward a $20 billion proposal. And we know the governor, whatever the number is, is also going to go big as he has in the past. Let's get this done and let's start getting more people indoors. Thank you. It's my honor now to turn it over to my friend, our mayor, demonstrating that Homelessness knows no partisan boundaries, by the way. 
And that is the mayor of Bakersfield, Karen Go. Karen? Thank you, Mayor Steinberg. My fellow mayors and I want to take the backgrounds that are behind them right now and have our homeless brothers and sisters have a background in their own home, in their own office, like the one behind me. Combating homelessness in our state continues to be a paramount issue that requires bold action. Reversing this tragic reality requires a broad range of resources for persons who find themselves in the most vulnerable situation of their lives. Our California cities are on the front line of addressing the homeless crisis. We've demonstrated success in adding emergency bed space, creating permanent housing solutions. And now we must address and sustain the next phase of the challenge, including providing housing, supporting services for severely mentally ill and drug addicted persons. We are so grateful for the state funding that's enabled Bakersfield to double our emergency shelter bed space. Yet, we find many of our homeless brothers and sisters on the street. We need ongoing resources to change the plight of Jonathan, Sharika, and Karen Ann, who I met on the streets yesterday and this morning. Today, we're calling on state leaders to prioritize the much needed ongoing flexible investments that will empower local cities to find the right size solutions to address the unique challenges before us and sustain our progress. A $20, $20 billion funding investment will will change the futures of the many Jonathans, the many Sharikas, and the many Karen Anns in our great state. We are our brother's keeper. Let us together build back boldly to improve the lives of all Californians. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Anaheim Mayor Harry Sidhu from the happiest city, in California. Mayor Sidhu. Thank you, Mayor Go. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anaheim Mayor Harry Sidhu. Oh. Anaheim has been a leader in addressing homelessness for more than six years. Since 2017, we have opened four homeless shelter, including two temporary facilities, and that continue today. These efforts were assisted by homeless emergency aid program funding. Working with U.S. District Judge David Carter, we have cleared inhumane homeless encampments from the park streets and underpasses. Our efforts in Anaheim show what can be done with determination, visionary thinking, and by maximizing city, state, and federal resources. But we are far from finished. We are working with the Salvation Army on a long-term facility called Center of Hope, as you see behind me. It'll include shelter beds, supportive housing, health care, and drug treatment. This public-private partnership will be a game changer for Anaheim and Orange County. You can see that these efforts in Anaheim have proven to be a strong return on investment for California, and we have made a great gains. But these are, there are still too many homeless on our streets and the need for affordable housing is great. And this crisis is bigger than Anaheim. We welcome ongoing flexible funding support from our state partners to meet this challenge and change lives. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Riverside Mayor Patricia Locke Dawson. Thank you, Mayor Sadu. You know, as the uh, one of the newest mayors in the Big City Mayor Coalition, I um, appreciate the uh, power that we have in our collective um, voice. So I have really appreciated being able to be part of this group. And I want to echo uh, 
the sentiments of my fellow mayors. I, I know uh, that we all want to thank our state legislature and governor for being proactive in engaging with our coalition. We don't, we don't often have to seek them out. They come to us and they listen, which I appreciate so much. And, and like Mayor Gloria said, one of the things I hear most from our residents in our cities, and I think it's, it's true with most of us, that they've made it clear homelessness is one of the greatest challenges of our time and leaders must rise to this occasion. We must rise to meet this challenge. And you've heard from every mayor here, each city faces its own unique circumstances surrounding this crisis. And here in Riverside, we've made considerable progress in tackling this issue. Uh, but as you've also heard, much more work remains to be done. We all know uniquely that the crisis of homelessness transcends our individual cities. The funding that we're asking for from uh, the legislature and that they have now budgeted gives us a unified front from the state to take on the needs of our respective cities. Things that we all know we need, not just the beds, but mental health services, recuperative care centers. We're opening one next month here in Riverside or a lack of housing. Without ongoing funding for these critical operations, our efforts, our momentum will be stalled and we won't be able to move forward. Now the city of Riverside has a proven track record of using direct funding from the state in an innovative and prudent manner. We are often uh, the ones who roll up our sleeves and get to work because we've not always been included in things. We work very hard to spend our money frugally and with great impact. This multi-billion dollar proposal will allow Riverside to support long-term solutions to homelessness such as Project Home Key or non-traditional shelter models, like what you see behind me here, our Riverside Village community. This is the first of its kind in Southern California and has provided a model that other cities have emulated. And it's also where I met powerful Paul this past week. He is a pro boxer who uh, is now getting into permanent supportive housing. And he's very grateful for the work that we have done here. So while we remain certain about recovering from this pandemic, we must also be equally certain and optimistic in our ability to meet the crisis of homelessness in our cities. And with this funding, I'm hopeful. We, have a, we just have a sense of optimism here and we can begin to move the needle. We can begin to make a change. And I appreciate being part of this historic day today and this historic ask. And with that, I wanna turn it over to Mayor Sarmiento in Santa Ana. Thank you, uh, Mayor Locke Dawson. And uh, I'm proud to stand with, uh, well, virtually stand with all the uh, mayors here on this uh, call. So um, I'm not gonna repeat what was said because I think a lot of the theme has already been uh, articulately made. I just wanna say that uh, one thing that we all can agree on as mayors is that the buck stops with us and we get those tough questions and we get those tough demands. And we know that here, uh, you know, for us, uh, what we found most interesting was that when we were talking about different issues like public safety and now public health, homelessness is still polling higher than either of those two critical, critical uh, issues that we deal with. So we know it's on the minds and uh, in the hearts of many of our uh, fellow residents. And so for us, uh, I know that what we've tried to do is to make sure that we invest intelligently and you're looking at backgrounds and you're looking at the background I'm in the front of, which is a um, permanent supportive housing project called Casa Cuarencia. Uh, and we do uh, a lot of service providing there, not only spaces and placements, but also wraparound services. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to uh, talk to you about is that Santa Ana is in Orange County. We're 80% Latino. Many of our residents are uh, below, live below the poverty line. So this is also an equity issue when we talk about homelessness, right? We want to deliver those services to our, you know, unsheltered, 
uh, residents and, and, and population. But at the same time, we want to create a quality of life that's going to be proud for our low income communities of color to be able to thrive in. And that's the that's the fairness that they deserve. And It's not going to be a one time, you know, lump sum amount that's going to address this problem. It's a multi year effort that we have to all work together on. And I'm very, very proud of all the efforts that we're doing uh, collectively, but we all have unique communities. And, you know, Orange County in the minds of others may seem like, and, and Harry can speak to this, it's not, you know, it's depicted as an affluent county. Well, you go into some of the pockets of Orange County and you see some real, real despair. And that's where we have to, I think, use this money intelligently to address those things. And so I'm really proud to say, uh, and we're blessed to be living in a state that I think there's um, an understanding and there's a humanity that we all want to deliver these services in. But I think the moment is now. And I think that, you know, we all have to, uh, you know, band together and use this opportunity and use it wisely because look, it goes away. It could be spent or misspent other places. And I think all of us are saying, we could do things intelligently, together, cohesively, and make the state, you know, again, you know, one of the best places to live in and a place that I've grown up in myself. So to the extent that, uh, uh, you know, I'm completely supportive of what was said, of the effort that is going to be, uh, uh, you know, that's going to be requested. We're grateful to the governor and his staff for being able to work with us. Um, so let me go ahead and, you know, just because I know we're short on time, I want to turn it over to my friend and, uh, other uh, newly elected mayor uh, from the great city of Stockton, Mayor Kevin Lincoln. Kevin, floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Sar Sarmiento. And uh, again, just thank you to uh, my fellow mayors here for your leadership. Um, the image that you see behind me is the image of Town Center Studios here in Stockton, California. Um, this, this location uh, was a ho formerly a hotel that was converted as a result of, of Project Home Key in units that were provided to our homeless and unsheltered population. Over 80% of Stockton residents view homelessness as a humanitarian crisis affecting the quality of life for all Stocktonians. And more than 60% of Stockton's homeless community are experiencing behavioral health challenges in the areas of mental health and substance use disorder. The need to expand wraparound services, emergency shelter capacity, transitional and permanent housing opportunities has never been greater. The fundamental allocate, the, the, the 20 million, uh, $20 billion funding, uh, funding allocations to our cities would help us take bold actionable, actionable steps to mitigate homelessness by addressing the root cause of homelessness in our communities and bring healing to the unsheltered residents. It is imperative that our cities have access to increased levels of flexible funding from the state to adequately address the crisis through more positive initiatives like Project Home Key, community outreach efforts, and ultimately homeless prevention. Once again, this flexible funding allocation for homelessness would provide us with the opportunities to meet the immediate needs in our city. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mayor Schaff of Oakland, California. She's on. Thank you, Mayor Lincoln. Uh, I believe Mayor Schaff may be joining us momentarily. Uh, I know she had another commitment, so uh, we can proceed with questions and perhaps come back to Mayor Schaff when she's able to jump on. Uh, so we'd welcome questions from anyone in the media to any of the members. Mayor uh, Schaff is here now. Oh, Just great. Welcome. I, I I from apologize. A, from, from the great city of Oakland, uh, I want to welcome my colleague and friend from across the bay, Mayor Libby Schaff. Thank you so much. I know my job is to wrap us up and send us home. Um, the state of California has made an amazing impact in our cities in bending the curve to start to address this moral outrage that is homelessness. I'm sure you heard from all my colleagues, there is nothing that our residents care more about than this. In Oakland, the state's assistance has helped us double our shelter capacity. That means double the number of people that we have been able to get off of the streets and allow them to sleep 
with a roof over their heads. It's allowed us to advance innovations in shelters like our cabin communities, our safe RV parks. We also have used the Home Key program to do miracles. Uh, I don't think anybody imagined that we could create permanent affordable housing for our formerly homeless so rapidly using existing buildings and not just hotels and motels. In Oakland, we converted a former college dormitory into housing and bought single family homes to uh, advance a very innovative model of shared housing for our formerly homeless seniors. It's truly beautiful. We know that this problem, <laughs> we know how to fix this problem. Each of our jurisdictions have done detailed analyses, have regional plans in the Bay Area, all home just uh, unveiled their regional action plan. And in Alameda County, uh, the second largest county in the Bay Area, we also just released this week a detailed systems uh, and, uh, analysis that shows exactly how we can end homelessness. We know how to do it. We just need the resources. $20 billion. $20 billion is an appropriate large investment in California's largest problem. It is something that we know our residents want to see that we are actually going to bend the curve and not juggle each year with the uncertainty of whether or not we're going to get a one-time allocation and what the amount of that allocation is going to be. The idea that this commitment is a five-year commitment is exactly what we need as mayors to actually bend the curve in our cities. There is nothing more important to our communities right now or to the future of us as a golden state. We know California is better than this, than to allow our elders, our children to sleep on our streets. This bold investment is the most important thing the governor and the legislature can do in this year's budget. Thank you. We as mayors are united in this request. Thank you, Mayor Libby Schaff. Uh, as members of the media can see, we have a great lineup, but it's uh, wonderful having a great uh, uh, cleanup hitter uh, like Mayor Libby Schaff to really drive us home. So the message is very clear. We're happy to take questions from members of the media to any of the big city mayors here today. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're going to start with Chris Wynn from ABC7. Chris, you should be able to speak now. Great. Thank you so much, Rachel. Uh, Chris Wynn from KGO TV in San Francisco. This two-part question is for San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo and San Francisco Mayor London Breed. We'll start off with Mayor Licardo. Uh, this would be a big investment. What do you say to people who are on the fence that it will be money well spent? And secondly, for Mayor Breed, uh, there are some who have the notion that if you build it, they will come, referring to homeless people from outside of the state who might come here in search of housing and services. Your response to that. But first, we be let's start with uh, Mayor Licardo. Thanks, Chris. Uh, there's no question it's a big investment. There's also no question that when we emerge from this pandemic, uh, this will remain our biggest problem. And the evidence is clear that we haven't spent nearly enough addressing this crisis. Uh, we believe this budget surplus will be something on the order of 40 billion, perhaps a bit more. Obviously the numbers uh, change as uh, we get closer to the final decision, uh, but spending half of a surplus on the biggest problem we face in California and making that commitment last for a half decade, that's money well spent. Mayor Breed. I think uh, I believe, uh, Mayor Breed had to jump off for a scheduling conflict. So she did. Yeah. So Chris, we'll connect you with her office after this. My apologies. Great. Thank um, you, Chris. 
Next question comes from Alejandra uh, Quisada. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that from Telemundo, Sacramento. Her question is, uh, the money will be used to continue the existing programs or to create a state program that will be implemented in every city and only the cities in this petition will have access to the money or will it be distributed to every city? I'm sorry, the, uh, the question was, how will the money be distributed? Correct. Yeah, and again, I welcome any of my colleagues to jump in. Uh, we know that the funding formulas from the state have typically allocated uh, dollars to counties. Uh, and because of the leadership of uh, predecessors like Mayor Daryl Steinberg and Mayor Eric Garcetti and our efforts in the Big City Mayor's Coalition, we now have direct allocation to the cities. Obviously, we'd love to have even larger allocations to the cities, but we know that this is going to be a partnership, cities and counties working together uh, because we each have critical roles to play. We let know me, where me. homelessness is worse, and that is in our big cities. Uh, Mayor Steinberg? Yeah, I'll just try just on the uh, question of how the money should be allocated. What we seek is maximum flexibility to be able to balance both the capital that is necessary to build whatever kind of structures we, we need uh, to bring people under a roof. But then secondly, the, and Mayor Schaff is absolutely correct, the five year piece of this is really important because it also enables us to use flexible money for operations um, and to be able to spread that money out over five years. It's the combination of the capital and the operations that creates the magic that allows people to regain uh, their lives off the streets. Thank you, Mayor Steinberg. Anyone else like to respond? Okay. I just add that answers. this is, we're not asking for a new program. We all know what the proven strategies are. Our issue is scaling them. And so this is not a new state program. It is investing in evidence-based strategies to prevent and end homelessness. And the flexibility that Mayor Steinberg talked about allows Californians to get more bang for their buck. Each one of us knows the investments that we have made locally and where that added state dollar is going to have the biggest impact. That is what's so important about this request. Thanks. I have a question from Christina Kim from KPBS uh, directed towards Mayor Gloria. How many funds would San Diego County expect to get and what programs or projects would you want to prioritize? Sure, I appreciate the question. Uh, like our chair, uh, Licardo mentioned, you know, this is up to the state to decide how to apportion. Uh, I'll point out that last year through state home key dollars, we were able to receive over 30 million. That's what procured those two hotels adding over uh, uh, housing for over 400 San Diego. So, you know, proportional scale, I think you could potentially figure out from there, but that's a legislative decision to be made by others. Where I would like to see dollars, I would like to see us grow the number of permanent supported housing units in our city. That's how you solve homelessness, housing plus services. That's what we did with the hotels. We are prepared to acquire additional hotels uh, if given these dollars. Uh, we can also help provide gap financing to other projects that are underway, things the city council has already authorized. Perhaps we could buy down some more affordability, get um, more deeply affordable units. Uh, work with our county. Uh, had a long meeting very early this morning with the county of San Diego trying to coordinate our federal relief dollars, the money that we're putting forward with their money. Uh, that probably looks like more detox beds, uh, more uh, recuperative care beds, the kinds of niche spaces that we're currently missing. This is a part of why San Diego can see too many super, super sick people on the streets. Uh, it's the permanent housing that addresses the issue in the long run. Some of these intermediate step beds in between. Uh, really, everything's on the table. And what I would refer you to is to look at our city's homelessness action plan that was adopted on a unanimous bipartisan vote of the city council last year. The full implementation of that plan would require $1.9 billion. You understand very clearly why I'm here today and so strongly supportive of this proposal. It will help us get much closer uh, to the interventions that are in that plan that would seek to reduce on-street homelessness by half in the next couple of years here in San Diego. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Eric uh, Galicia, RCC Viewpoints, you should be able to speak now. Go ahead, Eric. 
Uh, hello, my name is Eric Galicia. I'm the editor in chief of the RCC student newspaper. That's the local college over here. Uh, my question is for Mayor Locke Dawson, uh, two part question. So yeah, so um, in terms of uh, the spending um, that Riverside would implement, um, how would that go? How would you go about that when it comes to the fires that we've been seeing in the river bottom and other parts of the city? And um, also, uh, you campaigned on tackling homelessness through a regional approach. So if, uh, you know, do you plan to uh, use some of the funds that Riverside would get to help out our neighboring cities with homelessness? Well, thanks for the question, Eric. Um, I appreciate that. Both of those questions are related to each other, um, but I will tell you, fires aren't necessarily a homeless um, related problem. I mean, some of it can be. But this money we will use for um, we will use for most likely not just housing but services. We're going to bring services to um, this region, and also we're already working with the regional coalition right now, and we've made um, a plan to tackle these kinds of things where we are working with our surrounding cities, we're working with the county, we're working with the state, and we have a plan to address not only the fires in the river bottom, but also just the folks that are down there and getting them into housing and getting the services that they need. So the money will be used wisely as it has in the past. Um, as you know, we have in Riverside here, the Office of Homeless Solutions. On there, you can see our dashboard, and we plan to use that money to uh, just build on the programs, as Mayor Schaff said, build on the programs that have been successful. We know what works, so we just need to make sure that we have the funding to continue that work. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, we have Megan. Megan, you should be allowed to speak now. Megan, please tell us your outlet as well. Uh, thank you. I'm uh, with, this is Megan Cunip with Los Angeles Magazine. My question is for Mayor Garcetti. Uh, this request comes, as you know, at a tense time in the federal lawsuit with Judge Carter. Uh, Mayor, you had said after he issued his big injunction that you would still hope to sit down and work something out with him. His order on the stay request Sunday night opened the door for that. Have you or anyone else at City Hall talked with the judge this week? And if so, how did those discussions go? Um, I can't speak for everybody, but uh, I was pleased to see him uh, back off of the uh, the order and to um, sit down with us, which we've never not wanted to do. In fact, we've taken the lead when it comes to the city and the county and others in engaging and making promises and meeting those promises. So we've, we're, I just said stay out of the way of progress. I'm happy. Uh, I think the council president spoke to him. Uh, briefly, and we agreed to sit down, I believe, on the 27th of May um, in the next. I know he has a big case. He's dealing with the DDT dumping case as well. Uh, but in the meantime, we're not wait, waiting one minute. Um, we always welcome uh, helpful uh, work from the judiciary, uh, but I certainly don't want to see anything just like what we're advocating here that adds layers or friction or slows a single thing down. We're acting too quickly to, to be able to stand that. So it doesn't sound like there's any discussion then before the stay request to the ninth. That's still pending and it doesn't sound like there's any hope that there's some kind of settlement or negotiation that's going to halt that. I would hope so. I mean, that's what we were gunning for till this came out of nowhere, uh, quite frankly, to have the settlement. We already made one uh, huge jump forward with that settlement with 60, a commitment to 6,700 additional units of housing. Um, as you saw in my budget, it's a historic funding to be able to get there uh, that we hope the county matches as well. But um, no, we're, we're ready to, if he wants to talk to me tomorrow, I'm, I'm available. That's, that's, but have you tried to initiate that before? May 27th is a long ways off and there's some pretty immediate deadlines in this injunction. Yeah, no, that's what he asked for. And in the meantime, okay. we feel satisfied with what he's withdrawn from the, or stayed from his order. Okay, okay. Um, I did have another uh, question regarding the pallet shelters that yes. are uh, going everywhere, especially in, in North Hollywood. Um, these same shelters had a pretty bad fire out in Banning last December. And uh, the mayor of Redlands is citing that fire as a reason to go with another type of tiny home that he says isn't as, as flammable. I, I understand that I think the city bought these pallet shelters before the incident in Banning, but I'm just wondering if there's been any review of the flammability of those pallet shelters and just how they're being used. 
Yeah, very extensively. And in fact, folks wanted to uh, build them much more densely, uh, but our fire inspectors insisted on the space between them. Um, remember, these are ones also that have for us, um, because you can have them with or without, there's uh, HVAC systems and there's fire extinguishers on each individual unit. So we've done a lot of extensive work to make sure that they're going to be um, safe and that they are spaced out from each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, we've got about three more questions here. Um, Gina from Bay City News. Gina, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Great. Uh, so I have two questions. The first one is um, more general, but how exactly will the um, uh, 20 billion proposal be split among cities? I mean, will each, is it just the major cities here on this call um, or in this coalition? And will it be based off of maybe population? I mean, how do you anticipate that will be split? And the other one is um, specifically for uh, Mayor Licardo, what initiatives would you prioritize in San Jose and how much funding do you anticipate San Jose would get if this was passed? Jenny, thank you. Uh, the allocation will be determined, of course, by the legislature and the governor. Uh, but what we've seen in the past is essentially allocation that goes both to counties uh, and to large cities. Uh, counties obviously have smaller cities within them. Uh, and the allocation typically is based on a formula that combines both uh, point in time homeless counts and population. And so we expect uh, those kinds of formulas to continue uh, and we'll be certainly advocating to ensure that the hardest hit cities, after all, it's large cities that have suffered most uh, from homelessness are in fact uh, front and center in focus. Uh, in terms of San Jose, uh, I think what you've heard from my colleagues is very true in San Jose as well. We need many different solutions because homelessness is a very complex problem. Their diversity of ways in which people come into homelessness will be spending dollars certainly to prevent homelessness because we've seen, as I think Libby Schaff has seen in Oakland, uh, very effective strategies using relatively small amounts of money that keep families housed. That is a much less expensive and much uh, more proactive way of addressing this problem. And then obviously we'll be building more of the emergency housing communities like you see behind me, permanent supportive housing and shelters as well. Uh, we need all of the above strategy because we know uh, we can't simply wait for one solution while others are still on the street. We're gonna need multiple solutions. Great, thank, thank you. you. And, and just, mm -hmm. sorry, if, if possible. Yeah, go ahead, Gina. Um, we, you know, we've heard a lot that this is a, a multi-pronged solution that that we that you know the mayors already know. If you could quickly summarize what that looks like, I mean, what are the main things? What are the main solutions to to uh, you know end homelessness or at least curb it? Well, I'll kick it off, and I'll ask my colleagues to jump in. Uh, the one solution is housing. <laughs> so certainly. We need to build a lot of housing. We need to bend the cost curve because we need to build that housing much more cost effectively uh, than in the past. And we need to be able to do it quickly. And that requires some innovation. And what you're seeing throughout these 13 cities are innovative approaches, everything from tiny homes to prefabricated modular uh, to various approaches to density that are enabling more people to get off the street because we're able to accelerate uh, in a time of emergency. We're able to get a lot of red tape out of the way. The governor's been uh, forthright about allowing for waivers of sequest. So we need flexibility and the ability to move quickly. And to that, of course, I'd also add, as we've learned in many communities, preventing people from getting into homelessness is a much more cost-effective approach. And so we need both housing and homelessness prevention. I'll ask my colleagues to jump in. So, Sam, I've said Libby, did you Please. want to go ahead? Chef. I just wanted to lift up uh, a recent regional action plan by All Home. And what it puts forth is really how we can maximize the flow through our system and make the investments that are going to be the fastest and most efficient at bending the curve. And that's the one, two, four ratio. The idea that for every shelter bed or emergency or, or interim housing uh, bed that we have, we need to create two permanent affordable houses uh, for people to live in forever in security. And we need to fund for prevention interventions. What we're seeing is we're getting people out of homelessness, 
but new people are becoming homeless at a faster rate. And so I appreciate what Sam said about prevention. In Oakland, Keep Oakland Housed in two years has prevented 5,000 households from falling into homelessness or rapidly re resolving their homelessness. And the average uh, cost has been about $4,000 per household. Very efficient, very effective, and allows us to maximize our speed at which we completely end homelessness. One, two, four. Thanks. Sam, I wanted to- uh, Thanks, Libby. Harold? Yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to address it from, from our perspective because the question is often answered, what is the process? And I think it's unique for every city. Uh, but I can tell you in Fresno what has been working is uh, obviously you, you need to be able to fund outreach workers, the folks that make contact with the homeless population, the folks that are out there on the streets. There has to be that rapport established and it takes a lot of work, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. Uh, the second thing is to be able to take those individuals and place them into transitional housing. And that uh, transitional housing must have security, uh, needs uh, services for, for mental health, uh, for alcohol and uh, substance abuse addiction to address the uh, the growing population of domestic violence victims and their families that are out there on our streets, uh, our, our veterans who oftentimes are abandoned. All of those services uh, need to be provided uh, and not on the short term, but long term. And then there has to be an exit strategy from that transitional housing. And that exit strategy uh, is in permanent supportive housing, rapid rehousing, alternative uh, housing models like uh, tiny homes, accessory dwelling units, uh, as, as well as apartment complexes. All of those things have to happen. If not, we run into stagnation. And the fact that we ultimately end up with people uh, remaining in transitional housing or emergency shelter for longer periods of time, ultimately transitioning back out onto the streets and continuing with that life. And then lastly, is making sure that these folks uh, have skills that will allow them to be gainfully employed. Uh, and, and so we need all of those services um, over a multiple period of time, uh, which is why we're asking for four to five years of funding uh, and sustained funding. So uh, that is really how, at least in Fresno, I can tell you how the money is going to be utilized. Darrell, would you like to jump in briefly before we... Uh, I was going to say up? very briefly, I think one of the reasons why homelessness is complicated is because people are homeless for different reasons. And there is a different set of solutions for people, for example, who become homeless for a short period of time because of an economic circumstance. Contrast that with people with who are living with severe mental illness or drug addiction who have been on the streets for a long time. In both instances, and I'm and I and there are more instances and more reasons, we know what to do. Uh, but the interventions are different. For the former, it, it, it's immediate housing um, and to make sure that homelessness is, doesn't last long. For those who are chronically homeless, we call it a continuum of care. And what this funding would allow us to do would be able to fund the assertive outreach, the case management, the wraparound services, the temporary housing as needed, uh, and then the transition to uh, longer term or permanent housing. And so it's all about getting to scale on all of the interventions and strategies that we know work because we're doing them. We just can't do it for enough of the people. Thank you. Dave. Thank you. Uh, I, I know we have two more questions. We're a bit past time. So I know some of our colleagues may have to leave, uh, but for those who are able to stay, we'll, we'll, we'll take those two last questions and then we'll wrap up. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Christy Gross, go ahead, Christy. Thanks for your patience. Hi, yes, this is Christy Gross with KTXL Fox 40 Sacramento. Uh, this question is for Mayor Steinberg and for Mayor Lincoln. Um, if you guys are able to get this commitment, what programs and specific projects do you guys have ready to go um, to hit the ground running um, if you were to get this allocation of money? And then going with that, how do you combat you know, NIMBY, the not in my backyard, those communities um, who don't want those shelters and centers and um, affordable housing near them. I'll go ahead and, and start it off. Thank you, Christy, for um, for that question. Uh, when it comes to the matter of NIMBYism, 
uh, you know, it's very important, you know, to to understand and have have community buy-in and, and work alongside and through our current uh, community-based organizations that are currently partnering in the space to help to meet the needs of the most vulnerable in, in our community. And so in order to get public buy-in, we have to make sure that we are we are enhancing the services you know that that we are currently have in place and working through and with those partners uh, to meet the specific needs. What was the other question? I'm sorry. Um, and what what specific uh, projects does do you have ready to go if you were to get this allocation of money? Yeah, so there are currently uh, pro pro projects in place right now. One of the things that we have to do is we have to expand. It's absolutely necessary to expand that emergency shelter capacity and then and, and enhance our transitional housing, but also work very hard towards that, you know, permanent um, affordable housing, you know, for our unsheltered, you know, population. Like many of my colleagues have said um, over the past hour that this is very multifaceted. This is a very complex issue uh, when it comes to homelessness and every community is impacted differently. But we can't forget the hard work that our community stakeholders are doing right now. And the people in our community that have been, have developed that rapport to Mayor Dyer's um, point with, with the community, we have to work with them. We have, to, we have to double down on those resources so that they can be as effective as they possibly can which re with reaching uh, this most vulnerable population. Daryl, did you want to respond? Okay, uh, we'll, we'll move on. I, I think you may not be. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, and the final question? Uh, the final question is um, from David Downey for Mayor Locke Dawson. Um, the sweeping extent of homelessness along the Santa Ana River through Riverside continues to be a daunting challenge. How will having more state money help solve this problem? I think it's been alluded to in a couple of the other questions and answers, but um, we've got a regional plan. Uh, we know, and Mayor Dyer talked about this too, it's not, it's not just getting people into beds. So we have prevention strategies. We will use that to help stem the flow of folks that are availing themselves of um, their own housing in the river. But also, um, we need better exit strategies, right? We need better exit strategies. As Mayor Steinberg alluded to, we know what our population is. It's not just one monotypical population. We know we have people suffering from mental illness. We know we have people suffering from drug addiction. And we know we have people with physical disabilities, um, people who are just down on their luck and are, need a leg up and help. So the money that we will be getting will be going towards each one of those programs. Mostly what I would like to see though, is a focus on services. Um, we have, um, you know, very, uh, the strategies that we put in place now are to help folks coming out of incarceration, help folks coming out of the mental health system, help folks coming out of the hospitals so we can get them back on their feet. And then that will actually help us keep that population from growing. So that's the idea. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, with that, I think that's a good note on which we should uh, wrap this up. I wanna thank all the members of the media for being with us and thank all of my colleagues for their forceful advocacy. We'll continue to push in the weeks ahead and we look forward uh, to celebrating by getting more housing built in our communities and helping our homeless neighbors get off the street. Thank you all.